Yo, so uh, I reviewed the 1999 documentary Beyond the Mat, directed by Barry W. Blostein, <clears throat> where he interviews a number of wrestlers and talks about the behind the scenes of wrestling that people, I guess, didn't know back then, but we know now. You know, you can't really, like, enjoy sports anymore. It's like, oh, you like football. That means you enjoy giving people concussions. If you like MMA, uh, people get brain damage. Like, all these physical sports have negative downsides. I'm a bit tired of seeing documentaries about them. But I guess this is an old one. So, to be fair, maybe it was an issue at the front of everyone's minds back then. But, like... Still an issue. Just wish we could talk about something else other than the negative aspects of all these sports. Um, it features a couple of wrestlers and their stories and how they've been affected by wrestling. Uh, Terry Funk, Mick Foley, Jake Roberts, The Rock's in it. I don't really watch wrestling, so I don't know a whole lot of these people. I know The Rock, obviously. Um, Mick Foley, Mankind. I've seen his mask. I didn't know who he was. It's a cool dude. The rest I didn't really know. My dad knew one of them, so I guess they were famous. But I, I'm not a huge wrestling fan. Um, <clears throat> the movie, it is about the d director, Barry W. Blasine, going around interviewing all the famous wrestlers of the time period, talking to some ones that are kind of down and out, people that w did wrestle for a while and how it's affected them over time, people that are up and coming into the wrestling industry. And, you know, he became friends with a lot of these people and seeing what they're up to after wrestling and during wrestling and what the effect wrestling is having on them, their opinions on it, how you get started in wrestling. It was, like, a big look at, like, the wrestling experience, what it was like, how it affected people. Um, yeah. There's not, like, one specific plot. He follows Jake the Snake Roberts and his, like, downward spiral into, like, drugs and lack of child support payment but then if you go to like his stuff on Mick Foley it's more about like how his family is affected by it so it's like an all encapsulating uh, all encapsulating thing it's not on one specific topic um how the story was presented it was interesting I definitely liked it the data wasn't really new to me because obviously if you're drop kicking people with chairs there's going to be some accidental injuries there you put your body on the line it's kind of the point of the job they're trying to make it seem like, oh, well, okay, I shouldn't, I shouldn't misrepresent it. It kind of gave me the vibe that they're trying to be like, oh, this isn't right. But then the movie ended by him being like, I still love wrestling. And, you know, I'm like, damn, who's crazy enough to do that? So I guess I can't argue with him there. The movie was interesting enough. I got to learn a lot about wrestlers that I didn't know about, which is interesting coming from the perspective of someone who hasn't seen wrestling. Because I'm getting to see these wrestlers for the first time and learn about them without like having the nostalgia for them so i kind of have like a blank slate opinion on them um it's also weird to see the rock with such shitty facial hair uh but it was an interesting documentary you got to follow some stories i got some intricacies on like the inner workings of wrestling that kind of stuff especially back in the early 90s before it was even wwe it was pretty neat um storytelling i mean it was people's stories. You can't really control storytelling in a documentary, but it never, like, dwelled on one too long. It'd be... It had a very natural feel. And you'd follow Jake Roberts for a bit. it would be like, oh, ring, ring. I got a call from, um... New Jack. And he wants me to come out and help him with a movie deal. And we're gonna see how his acting career is going. So it was, like, it was very natural flowing. It wasn't like, this is the effects of boxing, wrestling... And now we're going to move on to this. It was all very natural feeling. It was interesting. The pace was good. Um, so that was the flow of the documentary. Um, choice of music and sound. The fact that I can't remember a single song should tell you all you need to know about that. It's normal. The sound is typical documentary stuff. You have a guy talking over it like this. And it'll show an audio clip. It's older. And it'll show an interview with some guy. It's it's. If you've seen one documentary, you've seen them all format-wise. They all do the same thing. you got, like, a few that stand out. But this is just a typical documentary. It's not breaking any ground in terms of presentation. Oh, that's hot. 
Uh, let's see what else. Does the documentary have bias? How could you tell? I think it has bias in the sense that the guy um, filming it was like a huge wrestling fan. Because I feel like this type of data in the hands of someone from like BuzzFeed International that doesn't actually like wrestling could definitely be like a slander piece. Like calling the wrestling industry a horrible like industry or something and like denouncing it entirely. So I think that his uh, bias is definitely that he enjoys wrestling. And he's coming in the position of someone who enjoys wrestling. He doesn't really affect his opinion of it that much. He has a lot more respect for the people. He's more concerned about its effects on their personal life. But he still likes it. So I guess there's a bias in that sense. But in terms of like how they present the information, not really, I guess. Like, it talks about... I guess it never talks about how much money they make from it. It talks about how they don't make much money when they're coming up. But it never really addresses the fact that they're making, like, millions to put their bodies on the line. Just talks about the fact they're putting their bodies on the line. So I guess it's, like, double biased in that sense. But not to a degree where it's bad. Um, do I believe the story presented? Yeah. It was really interesting to see some of the personal stories. One of my favorite things about documentaries is seeing how they capture personal reactions of people, even though they know there's camera there, cameras there. It's pretty interesting. Um, I There was some weird stuff in there. Like, one guy's dad was a pedophile. Like, he was born out of a mom who was, like, raped at age 13. And then the guy's like, yeah, I've always wanted my dad's respect. It's like, why would you want your dad's respect? He's a shithead. But, like, in terms of the actual stories told, they were really interesting. Um, I believe the stories told. I, they all felt really real. None of them felt, like, exaggerated. and didn't feel like they pushed too far with their points. Everything seemed within bounds of reality. Okay, we're in the end zone here. What do we got? What did I like about the documentary? I liked learning about the world of wrestling. I didn't really know much about wrestling before it. Some of the personalities in it were neat. I liked learning about how it worked. It gave me more of an appreciation for WWE and Vince McVan. Vince Vaughn. The, the head of WWE. Because that dude got jacked and went into the ring so people could beat the ass out of him because they didn't have enough villains. Like, that's dedication. That's one thing I always hold against people who claim that wrestlers are just being exploited. You, How can you call yourself exploited when your boss literally gets into the ring and lets you beat the shit out of him? They had him in this, and he was getting his head stitched up. And he wasn't complaining, and he was like, hey, man, good job. Like, that's how I can tell he's dedicated. And that's why I think that, you know... I don't really think he's as much at fault as people put him. Like, it's a high-risk job. You get paid high money to be put in that high risk. And he understands that, too. So I like the fact that I learned about all that. Um, yeah, I wouldn't say there's much I really dislike. If I had to change anything about the documentary, um, I don't know. I just don't like how documentaries all have the same format. Where it's like the same three sounds. You have the sad narration like this. And then you have the audio clip where it's some guy talking, and they may be able to play some like ominous music in the background. And then they'll do an interview or something. I wish they'd spice it up a bit more. It feels very generic. It feels like they throw a bunch of topics into the like documentary machine and just rumble it up and shit something out. But it was a good documentary overall. I think I just have problems with documentaries as a whole. I give it like a nine out of ten, maybe an eight could be a bit more interesting but yeah um my opinion on wrestling hasn't changed because i don't watch wrestling so that's my review of beyond the mat a 1999 documentary by barry w blossing about wrestling